<laughs> uh oh, be careful. We're being recorded now. Ah, uh, Camden's Tony. <laughs> All right. Carmen, are we ready to go? I believe we are ready. Good morning. There's Al. All right. So can we go ahead and um, can everyone do a favor and mute uh, adding feedback noise from somewhere? I'm not sure. <laughs> that would be awesome. Carmen, are you hearing that as well? Hearing what? Is that like a feedback noise? No, you're really like breaking up though. Okay, then I'm gonna stop my video just to help, to help with that. Hmm. Is that any better? A little bit, yep. Okay, great. So I love internet. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. It is a beautiful Saturday morning, and I know a lot of you guys um, hopefully have some good plans um, today uh, for this afternoon, but we're going to make your morning um, really exciting. We have so much to go over today with you, so many great updates and information to share. Definitely want to hear from you guys just a couple of housekeeping items. Um, if you wouldn't mind, uh, just because we are recording this, if you could stay on mute throughout, uh, just so we don't get any background noise that interferes. Um, and then if you want to communicate, we definitely want to hear from you. So if you want to communicate, we encourage you to use the chat. We've got um, folks monitoring the chat, so we'll be able to um, see you um, or see your comments or questions that come in. So feel free to do that. And if there's something that you want to share um, specifically that you would like to talk, feel free to use the hand raise button um, to be able to do that. And then if we get into some discussions that don't necessarily um, aren't for the entire group, what we may do is um, you know, put a pin in those and then come back to those at the end um, so that we can make sure that you get answers to questions and, and information that's valuable. Uh, but at the same time, we wanna make sure that we're able to move through pretty quickly. So I love the quote that's on the screen this morning. It really resonated with me as we kind of come out of, you know, this winter time and, and it almost feels a little bit like we could say um, 2023 has prepared our green traffic light and that the world is ready to think go uh, after COVID um, and certainly this time of year with all the beautiful flowers that are coming and new hope um, that's uh, that, you know, kind of comes with this season of what's possible, what can we get done if we start to put some action to um, you know, the things that we want to accomplish with our clubs and with our organizations and service projects. So we're going to hear a lot about that today. Um, so I'm excited. I hope you guys are feeling that um, kind of that rejuvenation and uh, you know, kind of a push to, to get moving and get things happening. So with that, um, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I do want to welcome, I know we have with us today, President, uh, Subtitian President, uh, Joanne O'Toole that is with us and we're going to hear from her a little bit later in a live stream actually from an event that she's attending uh, to help get the name out about Civitan in, uh, in a great fair that is being put on today for um, people with disabilities and those that support them. So excited to have Joanne with us today and I don't know if she's popped in yet but I do believe we will be seeing um, Executive Vice President Scarlett Thompson join us later today. And then we have one more guest that's going to join us, and um, that is President-elect candidate Michael Morgan, and we'll get a chance to hear from him about his candidacy and some of the things that uh, he wants to share with us. So um, with that, if you would, let's go ahead and do our, um, our pledge and our creed. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
私はシビちゃん命のように限りなく虹のように新鮮に My hands do the work of the world and reach out in service to others Meine Ohren hören den Schrei der Kinder und den Ruf der Welt nach Gerechtigkeit, Fortschritt, Einigkeit und Frieden. Mis ojos buscan para que otros se unan a la formación de buenas ciudadanos y el servicio civitano. Min mun kaller til innsats i hverdagen og former menneskets bønner på alle språk. My heart beats for every friend, bleeds for every injury to humanity, and throbs with joy at every triumph of truth. Meine Seele kennt keine Furcht, außer für ihre eigenen Unzulänglichkeit. Mi esperanza es por un mundo mejor a través de los civitanos. Mit motto für ein bedre Samfunnsson. My pledge to practice the golden rule and to build upon it a better and nobler citizenship. All right, thank you, Carmen. Um, and I am gonna actually try this again. Can you guys see the video? Anybody got a thumbs up for me? <laughs> can you see it? Okay, perfect. And you can- Agenda, I can see an agenda. <laughs> perfect, okay, yep. So um, thank you guys again for joining us today. As you can see, we have a lot that we're gonna cover. And you know, I know, um, you know, we would love to be, you know, gathered together in person, um, but we didn't, you know, that's not possible for a lot of people right now, but we know how important it is to bring information to you, to gather together, um, you know, with the, for those of you that got to do the breakout sessions, I hope you got to see new people or um, get an opportunity to, um, you know, connect with people that you know, um, that you already know that maybe you haven't seen in a while. So definitely want to use this as an opportunity for fellowship and joining together. But what we're gonna cover today, as you can see, is um, a lot around things that are gonna support your club. So um, I'm gonna share with you some international and regional updates, things that uh, will be helpful to kind of know what's coming. And then we're gonna hear from Kendra Warmly, who's unfortunately not able to join us today. She had a really important speaking event, that the opportunity that she got to be a part of. Um, and so she recorded a wonderful video for us to share on some uh, information about awards and our Civitan Days of Service. And then we're going to hear from John Walters, who is going to share with us an update on some things that are happening within the region around growth and development and recruitment, um, and with an opportunity um, to join together in just uh, in just about a month, <laughs> again, to uh, learn more about how to grow your club. And then we're going to hear from a video from Joe O'Toole, because again, he's uh, with President uh, Joanne at the Abilities Fair. And so he recorded a great video for us as well um, to talk about how we can support our philanthropy efforts. And then we're going to hear from Carol Walters, who is always the one who keeps us in the know, keeps us on track with deadlines and different things that we should know as clubs and kind of anticipate what's coming so that we can be prepared. And then we're gonna have president-elect candidate, Michael Morgan, um, share with us his information. And then we're gonna hear from Kinley, uh, our junior Civitan director, um, and just an update on how junior Civitan went this year. And then we're gonna see Joanne and Joe 
um, from their event. They're going to do a, kind of an interesting live stream for us so that we can join and feel like we were there in person with them. And then we've got some exciting stuff coming up around awards and some a scholarship announcement. Um, and then for those of you who are interested in creating a club website, um, it's so super easy. Uh, Civitan International has a new platform now, and we'll actually be able to walk through uh, my Civitan club. The Civitan club Martinsburg is going to be the guinea pig today. So we're going to actually, um, you'll be able to watch us as we kind of do that process um, and leading um, or being led by uh, Tony Masood, our chair for um, uh, marketing and communications. And then we'll wrap up. So definitely, as you can see, we have a lot to cover today. So we'll try to move quickly. Um, but definitely, you know, if you have questions or comments that you want to share, please feel free to do that. Awesome. All right. So let's get started. So uh, who is coming to Indianapolis? If you are coming to Indianapolis, feel free to put that in the chat just so we know um, who to expect to see when we're there um, in August. And if you are coming, you will get yet a third opportunity to vote on some amendments to our bylaws. And these exact amendments have not been decided yet. They will be decided by the International Board in just a couple of weeks and they will be published in the next Civitan magazine. So you definitely wanna stay tuned, make sure you open that up and read through those, especially if you're voting. But even if you're not, definitely you know, ask, um, ask us, ask uh, anybody from the leadership council, if you have questions and wanna know, especially if you're sending delegates from your club uh, to vote so that you can make um, you know, a voting decision based on what's best for the organization. And then if you haven't had a chance to check it out yet, please, please, please check out the new Civitan Supply House. It is absolutely phenomenal. There are so many new items. We um, were down in Birmingham, the International Board in March, and we got a chance to preview some of those new items. There's new member kits that are phenomenal, um, just to make sure that, you know, as a new member comes into the organization that we're getting them. Um, some really cool swag so they can start to connect with Civitan and, and kind of get that ownership and that pride in being a member. Um, so definitely check those out. Um, if you have any questions or run into any challenges, please feel free to reach out to me or anyone at the um, international staff will certainly be able to help you with that. Um, and then lastly, I'm excited that our international president-elect candidate, Michael Morgan, is going to be with us later to share information about his campaign, but we also in Region 4 have an opportunity for someone to run as international director to replace me. At this time, I don't know that we have any candidates that have submitted their application, so I just want to share what will happen if no one does. Um, so if no one submits an application by May 1st, which is the deadline to submit that, I am willing to serve for another year but that is only if no one else submits an application to run for director. And I gotta be honest with you, uh, when I signed up for this, I thought I was gonna be serving for three years anyway, um, but because of COVID and some ways that the, um, the board uh, terms were staggered, um, and actually Carol, who's our planning and procedures chair, uh, she was willing to serve an extra year, which made it a four-year term and that's what shortened mine into a two-year term. So what that means is that if I, if no one applies this year, I will serve for an additional year, and then the person that um, that serves or runs next year to serve will only have a two-year term. So um, if you are interested in serving either now or in the future, please, please, please let me know. I would love to talk to you about how much fun we've had, and while it is certainly a lot of um, you know a lot of meetings and, and things like that as we've gone through this last transition. Uh, the hope is that within the next year, we'll start to see some of the, the transition from district to region districts uh, start to settle down and um, we'll make it so that we'll be focused more on what's gonna happen for the future of the organization, how we can grow and thrive. And so if that is exciting to you, which it is super exciting to me, I encourage you, to reach out to me um, and I'm happy to, to share with you what that looks like going forward and what that commitment is. So again, super excited to serve another year. If no one is ready or, or um, able to do that, 
quite yet, but if you are, let me know and uh, we'll have a great conversation. All right, uh, so Carmen, great. So then the next thing um, is kind of more on a regional level. So that's kind of was my international update. Um, and so I just want to share with you where we are as a region. Uh, you know, we have currently 32 active clubs with 633 members so far this year. Since October, we have added 12 new members, and unfortunately, 31 members have left their clubs. So it puts us at a kind of behind the eight ball a little bit uh, by 19 members, which is a negative about 3% in growth. And um, which is a little bit better than Civitan International. They're trending closer to 4%, a negative 4%. So we've got a lot of great work to do. Um, and I wanna uh, just congratulate Baltimore, Chambersburg, Berkshires, Silver Spring, and Northern Shenandoah Valley Clubs because they are the clubs that represent that 12 new members. Um, and I'm also, I don't wanna steal any of John's thunder, but you know we are looking to um, add two new clubs with even a potential third new club by the end of the year. <clears throat> so if that happens and each of our clubs added two new members, we could actually exceed our 10% growth target this year with a little, little bit of room to breathe. So I, I would just really encourage you, um, you know, between now and the end of the year, look for just a couple of people that would be great assets to your club, people that are passionate about giving back to the community, that want to work in the projects, that have special skills that maybe your club is lacking right now um, and you know, would really help to enhance your club, just you know, get your eyes out there, look for those folks and invite them in, invite them to a project, invite them to a meeting um, and get them involved because we'd love to have them. And I know that Civitan will only be stronger if we recruit more of those in the community that share our mission. And then uh, we've had since October our connect to Thrive meetings. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to announce we have two more uh, between now and uh, when we start our next Civitan year in October. Um, and that is May 9th and June 13th. We have two exciting things coming up for you in those meetings. So if anybody, um, and they're open to everybody. So anybody that would like to join, we're going to talk about member recruitment training in May. And then we have a dynamic speaker that spoke um, about generational differences and how to kind of overcome that so that you can make engaging clubs with everybody um, being able to be involved in those. And um, so that is going to be again in uh, June um, on the 13th. And then from there, we're going to take July off. And then we have the international convention in August, and then we've got a spring meeting or a fall meeting coming up in September. So we'll be back with that series in October. And then the last thing I want to update everybody on is we, um, for those of you that uh, uh, have, have been here for a little while, have seen a very familiar face that's going to be coming back to serve in the role of philanthropy chair. Unfortunately, Ginger Malone had to step away from the position. And so while we thank her for her service in this uh, you know, completely new role that she was willing to take on, um, we are grateful that Joe O'Toole was willing to jump back in and lead us in making sure that the core mission of Civitan stays properly funded for generations to come. So you'll hear from Joe, as I said, in just a bit. But in the meantime, I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank Joe for jumping in and being willing to serve in this very critical role. So with that, I will, does anybody have any questions? Anything in the chat? Is that good? Okay, I don't see anything. So let's turn it over to Kendra to share about Civitan Days of Service and our new awards program. Thanks. Hello, everybody. My name is Kendra Wormley, and I am your membership engagement chair for the Region 4 District. I am so sorry that I'm not here with you guys today, as I am currently doing a keynote um, in Martinsville, Virginia, and unfortunately, it's kind of conflicting with what is taking place. So I'm hoping you guys are enjoying yourselves today doing this good old um, spring meeting that we're having online. Um, and I just wanted to share a few things of what's really going on um, in the membership engagement world. So let's get started. So 
something that I want to share with you guys is um, our new Civic Teen Awards program that is starting up. Well, but it's kind of currently going on right now because we are in the 2022, 2023 year, Civic Teen year. So the awards program has changed and I want to give you guys an update of how and what that really looks like. So the Civic Teen Award Program allows clubs the opportunity to be recognized at both the district and the international levels for their efforts to improve the communities worldwide. And this may be something that you guys have done before, but the structure has just changed a little bit. So these, um, the Civic Teen Award Program is going to cover all club activities that have started from this Civic Teen year starting on October the 1st of 2022 until the end of the Civic Teen year, which is going to be September the 30th of 2023. So I'm going to break down some things just a little bit for you guys, just give you a tip of the iceberg. Um, but for more information about the Civic Teen Awards program, please go to the website www.civitan.org slash awards, where you will be able to get more information and download the um, Civic Teen Award program brochure. So this is a new thing when it comes to the awards program for this year. All submissions for Civic Teen Awards will be done online. Yes, it is all online, which is very amazing. So what you will do is that when you go to that website, that www.civitan.org slash awards website, you're going to see where you're going to look for that application. And when you click on that application, you'll be able to fill it out and submit all of your information online. Applications that are mailed or emailed are not accepted. You have to submit your awards online through the application. And when you submit your application, you will receive a confirmation email from growth at And that's going to be your way of knowing whether or not that submission went through. And always, you know, that if you ever have any questions, you can reach out to me or you can reach out to Civitan International if you're having any difficulties at all. So something else with the awards program. So when you're submitting these awards, what's going to happen is that the districts are going to align their awards program. It's all going to be combined into one with international. So this is going to allow clubs to complete at both levels, but only using one application. How fantastic is that? So when you submit that application, you are submitting for your district, but also for international. And applications that are submitted online, they're going to be forwarded to the district judging committees, which will select the first, second, and third place winner. And that first place winner within that district, that person in that district, that first place winner of that club, I'm sorry, they're going to roll up as the finalists that are going to compete for the international level. So when you can, when you turn an application in for that district level, if you come in the first place on the district level, you will automatically be submitted onto that international uh, level for the award. So let's go over the timeline. Applications are going to be due on December the 1st of 2023. So as you're in the Civic 10 year, go ahead and gather those things that you need. Gather that information that you need for whatever what you want to apply for. So that way, when the application is due December the 1st, you have all that good information ready and good to go. Applications received by the District Award Committee is going to be received on December the 8th of 2023. And then district winners will be selected by February the 1st of 2024. Applications received um, by International Awards Committee will be received on February the 15th. So after it comes from that district level, whoever's that first place winner is going to go to the application um, recipient for Civic Day International. And then the international award winner, and then I'm sorry, the international winners will be announced to the winning club of April of 2024. And then the international winners uh, will be announced to all of Civitan to membership um, in May of 2024 in the Civitan magazine. And then those international winners are going to be recognized at the 2024 international convention. So what are some of these um, awards? So we have competitive awards and we have merit awards. 
So the competitive awards are gonna be Outstanding Civitan Awareness Campaign, Outstanding Junior or Senior Club Partnership, Outstanding Club Fundraiser, Outstanding Club Communications, Outstanding Health and Wellness Project, Outstanding Family and Community Support Project, Outstanding Education and Employment Project, Outstanding Inclusive and Accessible Communities Project, Outstanding New Club, and the Dr. Courtney W. Shropshire Outstanding Civitan Club. And for our Merit Clubs, it will be the Honor Club and the Merit Club. And I'm sorry, the Honor Club and the VIP Award. My apologies. So if you need more information, please make sure that you go to www.civitan.org slash awards. And when you go to that website, you're gonna be able to view and download the International Awards Program brochure. And in that brochure, what you're gonna find, you're gonna find more information about the program along with the award summary, mandatory items, specific award criteria, application information, and all other necessary information when it comes to the competitive and merit awards. So next, what I wanna to talk to you guys about and share with you guys is the Civitan Day of Service. Oh my goodness, I was so excited about this day um, that took place on March 25th of this year because this was a new initiative for us. And I felt that this was so amazing. We had over, uh, we had 11 posts or participation from clubs and club members from the Region 4 District. So for those who participated, please take this moment, give yourself a pat on the back, Give a hand a round of applause um, because you guys did an amazing job. So let's check out what took place in Region 4 District for Civitan Day of Service. We had the Annapolis Club. The Annapolis Club um, worked with Karen Cubbert and where they delivered over 100 pounds of shelf stable breakfast food. The Fairfax Civitan Club they made cars for Meals on Wheels that was in partnership with the Junior Civitan Club and then also made cat beds. The George Washington Junior Civitans, they participated in their environmental awareness project by cleaning the carriage trail in Charleston, West Virginia. We had Bill and Crystal Emery. They were traveling the US doing the things that they do in this RV life, which is so amazing. But they took the time to represent the Frederick and the Catatan Club. They provided a large piece of casserole pan to feed guests at the Ronald McDonald House in El Paso, Texas. And then they delivered puzzles, puzzle books, and movies to Ambrosius Gillian Veterans Home in El Paso, Texas also. The Peninsula Civitan Club worked with Laugh and Live Incorporated, which is a supported in-home organization that supports adults with IDD. We were able to provide clothing for a client in the program who also has two young children um, to provide them new clothing for the spring. The Civitan Martinsville, Martinsburg Club and the Civitan Club of Frederick tag team together and working and doing a project for Your Night to Shine Prom. And this is a prom for people with disabilities in the Tri-County, West Virginia area. Club members from both Martinsburg and Frederick assisted in decorating for this event, but they also help an assistant in cleaning up after the event, which I'm quite sure was super and important. So they did a wonderful job of working together and providing some very wonderful decorations for a night to remember and a night for those people who have disabilities to shine. The Smith Mountain Lake Civitan Club did a service project at Harmony Day Support Program. We also have the Thomas Jefferson Club, and they volunteer at the Charlottesville 10 Maller Race for the Arc of Piedmont. The North Columbus Civitan Club, they personalized blankets for a foster care center in their area. All of the blankets were made and then delivered by club members. And last but not least, we have the Dayton Civitan Club. 
And these club members provided and served dinner for participants of the Victory Project. The dinner consisted of salad, pasta, and pizza. The Victory Project is a program for at-risk youth in high school where they're learning various skills that can help them out in their future. So again, I would like to say thank you, Chubb, great job. You are awesome. Kudos, you're the best and well done. Thank you for being Civitans and thank you so much for doing such great work on March the 25th for Civitan Day of Service. And you know what? If you weren't able to participate in Civitan Day of Service this year, no worries. Just know that we're gonna be doing this again next year. So start thinking about what you wanna do, what your club wants to do, begin to start those brainstorming and just be on the lookout for a save the date because we will do it again. And as always, continue to look for ways to support your community. And don't forget to share, utilize your social media and submit your projects to be placed into the newsletter. Continue to do the work of the world and reach out into service to others. So this is my time with you guys. I'm not going to hold you much longer, but always know that if you have any questions when it comes to membership engagement or you need someone to bounce an idea off of, or if you have questions about fundraiser, anything along those lines, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I am here to support you the best way that I can. You can email me at kl worm at yahoo.com again that is k-l-w-o-r-m at yahoo.com thank you guys so much and i hope you guys enjoyed the rest of your day here with the spring region four district meeting so guys be blessed love you miss you guys take care and i can't wait to see you next time bye guys Fantastic. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, presentation by Kendra. I know we don't do um, all of the things that we do in our community for the awards, but it is a great way for others in the organization to learn about what projects and things that you're doing in your club that are working really well for the community and share that with everybody in Civitan International so that they might be able to do a similar project and implement that. Um, so the awards program is a really great opportunity to recognize our contributions and a way to um, you know, kind of highlight those for the rest of the organization. In addition to that, thank you all for Civitan Days of Service. Stay tuned, there's more on that. Uh, we're gonna celebrate some of those successes, but certainly it was great to hear all of the wonderful things that um, you guys did out in your communities and how we can continue to grow this as we go forward. So with that, I'll turn it over to- Denise, uh, yep. Denise, it's Carmen. If we can, before we move forward, we did have a question. Um, Elaine, if you wanna clarify your question, you said, do you mean region? And I, sorry, I'm just reading this now. I'm not quite sure what you meant about that. Sure. Yeah, she, she kept referring to the district. And um, I was just wondering if she meant region or if she really did mean the old districts. Well, the good news is, Elaine, is that that is one and the same. So anytime, those are now interchangeable. So if you hear district, it means region. If you hear region, it means district. So they all just got consolidated and now are one and the same. It's probably going to take a minute for us to get used to saying region, district, or one or the other. But the good news is, if you hear either one, that's exactly what we're talking about. Great. Okay, that <laughs> clarifies it. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So, John, let's talk about growth. There I am. Okay, next slide. Okay, uh, just an update on uh, club building, uh, family club uh, team, which is located at Friends Wilderness and a prototype family club uh, has connected with some other uh, homeschool organizations and attracted uh, five more interested families. They've also connected with a couple of nonprofit organizations. Uh, this is a busy day. Uh, they are a vendor today at the Tri-State Homeschool Fair, uh, where they're trying to solicit other uh, interested families. After that, they're planning 
uh, service projects throughout the rest of spring and summer to engage those families. So busy time for them. Uh, Carroll County Civitan Club, again, they're busy. And in fact, you'll see Joe and Joanne at an event there. The uh, Carroll County Clubs had uh, three meetings. They've spent time in the community, recruiting, calling, following up on emails, explaining what Civitan is and, and responding to their questions. Uh, the World of Possibilities Disabilities Expo is today. And again, we'll hear from Joe and Joanne later live from there. Uh, and uh, they wanted to, to note that all of their club builders have successfully completed the latest club building training. Um, next, uh, I'd like to do an update on the Civitan partnership with ARC, with the ARC. Um, I have contacted the state executive officers for the ARC in Maryland, Massachusetts, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. West Virginia is still in process, sorry. Uh, I've provided them with copies of the joint uh, PR release from Civitan and the ARC and a copy of our brochure on the impact areas. I was disappointed that there didn't seem to be as much awareness as I would have hoped for, but we're trying to make sure that throughout the organization, they are aware that we are now partners. Um, and I have, to those state leaders, identified the clubs in those areas. I will be trying to bring those leaders or their designates and the club presidents together. Um, had a meeting with the Capital National Club uh, just last night, and they are going to reach out directly, <coughs> excuse me, to their state leader. Uh, they're trying to bring people together and, and get some projects. Um, I am asking that each club prepare a summary of any joint projects or promotions they have had with the ARC. Again, try and let each side know what the other is doing. And, and that way we'll have a better uh, understanding of what we're doing as a group and they will also. And then we will try to form a better partnership. Next, <clears throat> um, just a quick commercial here. Um, Kendra and I are seeking Zoom participation with your club members. We would love to join one of your club meetings uh, and talk about ideas for growth, uh, retention. Those are our two areas. Uh, as part of that, we would like the club to kind of prepare a brief survey. The idea is to get everyone thinking about where they are and where they want to go. And that way, we can all work together to get you there. So if you would please contact either Kendra or myself, uh, we can arrange that. Looking forward to hearing from you. Uh, next, finally just wanted to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, promote the, uh, the May 9th Connect to Thrive. Uh, there will be a special focus on membership growth and retention, uh, lots of good ideas. Uh, this is built around the new club building materials, but even if you aren't planning to build a club, you are in a club that needs to be maintained and, and to grow. So there will be some good ideas and suggestions there and discussion, I'm sure. And those that wish to stay a little longer uh, can be certified for the club building. So uh, I hope you all look forward to that. Um, finally, if there's any questions or anything. That's my contact information, John C. Walters at hotmail.com. Got my phone number there. You can text me, um, but I am committed to building new clubs and new members. So please contact me with any questions or comments. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you, John. Uh, wow. I mean, <laughs> You and Kendra, you have a lot happening and definitely a lot of opportunities to support the club. So definitely encourage clubs that are looking for growth opportunities or just how to enhance partnerships um, to reach out to John and Kendra uh, for that opportunity. So with that, I will turn it over to uh, our new philanthropy chair, Joe O'Toole, for a wonderful video that he prepared. Good morning, Civitans. 
As philanthropy ambassador for Region 4 District, I was asked to give a report today, and it's my pleasure. Sorry I couldn't be with you, but this is what I'd like to speak about today. First, we're going to cover Civitans at the helm, have a brief report on that, then President's Council, and follow up with a little talk about breakthrough golf benefit. So let's get started. Uh, Civitans at the helm. First of all, I'm going to report on the six categories. The six categories are first, helmsmen's. The helmsman category represents $10 per member average that's donated by a club. Now, the uh, member, um, the Civitan numbers for how many members are in each club are established in October of each year. So let's get started with the helmsman, $10 per member average. That club, or that, I'm sorry, that award was presented to Annapolis, Chambersburg, and Glen Burnie last year. Now, I should note also that these figures and this helmsman's report is from last year. I just want to point out um, what, they, what the region did as a whole, and then I'm going to cover the first half of this current year. So, now I did mention Glen Burnie. And a lot of people say, well, gosh, Glen Burnie isn't around. And that's true. There are some inactive clubs, met, clubs mentioned. And Glen Burnie <coughs> was inactive as of May 13th, 2022. Next, we have the Navigator level. That's $25 per member average. This award goes to Dayton, Ohio, Greater Silver Spring, the Peninsula Civitan Club, Pioneer Ladies, West Columbus, Ohio, and Westerville area, Ohio, followed by the captain level, $50 per member average, Baltimore, Maryland, Marion County, Ohio, and Smith Mountain Lake. Commodore level is $75 per member average. That goes to Atkins, I'm sorry, Athens, Ohio, Martinsburg, West Virginia, the admiral level is $100 per member average. And that includes the Arlington, Virginia Club, Catoctin, Charleston, West Virginia, Thomas Jefferson, and the Tri-State Civitan Club. Now the highest level is admiral of the fleet. And this represents $200 per member average. And there are four. So could I get a standing ovation for these four. They are Fairfax, Virginia, Frederick, Maryland, Thomas Jefferson, and Westerville, Ohio. Thank you for that applause. Okay, we're looking at the participation for the Helmsman program. There are 39 clubs. There were 39 clubs during the 21-22 year. 23 of those clubs participated, or we had 59% participation. The total amount of giving at the end of last year for this region was $59,105.79. Now, let's talk about the current year. The current year, we have 32 clubs represented. That's right. I said 39 last year. We only have 32 this year. So there's been some clubs that have gone to inactive. We have 21 of those 32 clubs that are participating in the Helmsman's project, or 66%. After the first part, the first half of the year, the amount sent in for Helmsman for this region is $24,618.81. Let's talk about President's Council. What is President's Council? What's it cost? And what are some of the payment options? This is an annual giving program that helps support the work of Civitan International by underwriting the expenses of the plan giving and philanthropy department. This support comes back to Civitan as event sponsorships, legacy gifts, 
major gifts, and other essential fundraising income. These gifts provide a basis for stable funding for our charitable activities. Members of the President's Council make a monthly donation with a membership level starting at $10 per month per individual. Donations are tax deductible if you're in the United States. And all members are recognized at the annual report, or rather in the annual report, and invited to the President's Council reception at the International Convention. Now, I should mention also that there are some breaks in that $10 rate. If it's husband and wife, the uh, second person gets a little bit of a break on that. So there's some nice uh, uh, fee structures built in there for discounts. To sign up or to renew for President's Council, please check the website. It's very easy to find. Learn how the money is invested. You can download the fact sheet right from the website. Or give me a call. I'll be happy to uh, explain this to your club. And to join President's Council, just dial 1-800-CIVITAN, extension 116, or again, contact me. Let me talk about Breakthrough Golf a little bit. Civitan International is proud to host the 30th annual Civitan Breakthrough Golf event this year. That's amazing, 30 years. It's gonna be held August 17th at our international convention in Indianapolis, and we'll be playing the Plum Creek Golf Club. We'll have an 8 a.m. tea time uh, to get this event started, and then there'll be a nice lunch and awards program uh, after the event is over. The Breakthrough Golf Benefit brings together some of the world's most philanthropic citizens in support of people living with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Funds from the Breakthrough Event support Civitan International Research Center, the world-renowned facility with top doctors and scientists specializing in intellectual and developmental disabilities, any diseases of the brain. <clears throat> So far to date, over the 30 years, this fundraiser has raised six million plus dollars. And that's a tremendous accomplishment. Last year's breakthrough raised $125,545. Please support our golfers at this year's benefit or sponsor a hole in memory of a former golfer and pass along you know, the memory of that golfer. The, the golf hole sponsorship is $250 each. Or better yet, join a team and join us on the links. I'd like to also men mention walk and roll. You know, walk and roll replaced putt and chip some years ago, and this has turned into be a fantastic fundraiser. So I'd also like to do a little pitch on the, on the uh, walk and roll. Okay, this concludes my snapshot of the uh, philanthrop philanthropic efforts that we do in the programs within a Region 4. Um, I would like to be more involved with each club within our region, and I would be happy to visit your club, whether it's drive to your club or visit like we are now via Zoom. And I can speak to, you know, what's going on with your club and the options. And it's good to do this in advance of planning your budgets for the next year. So I'm available in, in person or via Zoom. So thank you very much and have a good rest of your day. Um. Awesome. Well, I kept wanting to uh, ask questions and I realized he's on video, not in person. So it definitely sounded like he was with us um, and provided so much great information as he always does. Um, I see in the chat, there's a lot of encouragement for joining um, the President's Council, giving to Civitans at the helm, and of course, support all of the other uh, opportunities to support CIRC that Joe mentioned. Um, so with that, we'll turn it over to Carol Walters, who is going to talk about 
and kind of keeping us in the know with all of the things that are upcoming for uh, Sojourn International and our club. So with that, Carol. Good morning. It's great to see so many of you here. I hope you're having a nice day where you are. We're having, but it'll get better. And it's the warm fellowship that makes it better. First of all, there is a live Region 4 District meeting that will happen in the fall on September 30th. Now I say live because we're encouraging you to get together in convenient uh, geographic areas sort of like the old area meetings or district meetings, but mostly like area meetings. So whatever clubs are together or can get together, that's the way to do it live. We're not gonna do one single location. So look around and see where you'd like to be and join with other people on September 30th. We're gonna celebrate the end of our year. And yes, there will be videos. Uh, candidate qualifications, if you are interested in running for the international board, that application needs to be completed by May the 1st and turned into international. And it will ask you all the right questions and require a picture. So if you're interested, talk to Denise, get involved. The international board is something that we all need to have people serve on. I served on it, as Denise said, I was on it for three years because of COVID, I got a bonus year. It's really exciting to see the changes that were made during that time and the changes that Denise and her board have been making during these last two years. So consider serving on the international board. We need people of all kinds of opinions to make a good functioning board. Now, club elections, this is spring. You need to be having your club elections. When you have your club elections, president, president-elect, secretary and treasurer, report them, please. And that's in the article that will come out in the newsletter from our region. Report them to international. That way they know whom to contact for training for each of those offices. If you simply attend a training, International doesn't know whether you are the designated officer for that position. And that can be confusing if more than one person attends the training. So report your club elections. Then everybody has to be trained, all those four officers, each year. If you are serving consecutively, you still need to be trained again because things change. It's amazing how much things can change from one year to the next. And this board has been very active trying to put things together. So be sure that you attend your training if you're a newly elected officer. Um, okay, the honor club application, you should be following that now. You can look it up on the international website as Kendra said, that's a good roadmap for where you should be, what you should be doing. So follow that Honor Club application. Then when it's time, submit it. That shows that your club is active and involved in what you're doing. I will at some point introduce Michael Morgan. He's not here at the moment, but he's coming. Who is our candidate for international president elect. He will be elected in Indianapolis. Clubs who are in good standing effective last fall, they had all their training completed and so on for this current year, will be the ones who can vote. Voting will only be held at international convention this year. People who have voted in the past remotely, I'm sorry, you're not able to. We have bent the rules for the last two years to allow that to happen, but we really can't break the rules. We need to go back to in-person voting until bylaws are changed that say otherwise. So come to Indianapolis, vote for the bylaws to be changed, vote for an opportunity for remote attendance and remote voting, but come to the Indianapolis convention. If your club is in good standing, you can vote. Proper number of votes per club. Okay, 
I did not see that Michael's here yet. So I will postpone my introduction of Michael. I did serve with Michael on the international board. We were on there together. There we go. Kendall's here, so Michael must be. <laughs> yep, Carol, I think we do have, uh, Michael has joined. So yes, if you want to go ahead. Great, so yeah. Go well, ahead let me introduce, introduce, yes, let me introduce Michael Morgan from region three, Apple, former Appalachian district. And Michael, hi. Welcome Hello, to Carol. visiting us. Good to see you. Good to see you. Alrighty, so good morning, Region 4, 7, 10 members. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank Denise for giving me a few minutes on the agenda today. Those of you that do not know me, my name is Michael Morgan, and I'm currently a candidate for the international, 7th International President-Elect. A few things about me. In 2010, I joined 7th I've helped to build three new clubs. I served on the international board. And in my final year, I was elected senior director. I am currently the region three member development chair in helping rebuild my current club in region, in region three. If elected, I would like to continue to focus on strengthening the clubs and helping new clubs build, get, getting growth with Civitan. I've currently been married to Kendall for over 18 years, and we live in Maryville, Tennessee. I would hope to see everyone in Indianapolis, and I would like to earn your vote. I know this was quick, but if there's any questions, I would feel free to ask any, uh, answer any questions. And if not, I will put my email address in the chat box so you can email me with any questions that you may have. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Michael, for joining us. And actually, he jumped on a little bit earlier <laughs> than uh, he was supposed to. So thanks for being helpful. Um, you know, and I just want to share that I was able to serve with Michael for my first year on the board. and definitely appreciated his leadership in, in that role. And um, definitely, you know, if you have questions for him, reach out to him. Um, you know, I, I know that he is very open with answering um, any questions you have or having any discussions about kind of things that are happening and the impact of those uh, decisions that the board is making. So definitely look forward to um, hearing more about his campaign as we get to Indianapolis. Um, and for those of you that are going, uh, you know, in advance of that, if you would reach out to him and, and ask those questions. So any questions for Michael while we have him right now? All right. Well, thank you for joining us, Michael. We definitely appreciate you jumping on. Um, hopefully we'll see you soon and uh, have a good rest of your day. Thanks again. Good. Have a good day, everyone. Bye. Thanks so much. All right, so we've been at this for uh, about 90 minutes. Uh, for those of you that joined us early, we're running a little bit ahead. Um, and then, uh, but if, uh, let's see. So Carmen, let's, let's go ahead and take that break now. Um, and then we'll come back with uh, Junior Civitan. It'll be a great way to kind of start the second half of the meeting. So we're gonna give a 10 minute break. Um, if you wouldn't mind, just, um, be back at that would put us at 10, 16, 10, 17, and that um, time frame. So we'll see you back in about 10. Thanks.
All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, we have a very um, fun-filled afternoon with some exciting things happening. Um, not afternoon. <laughs> we are not going into the afternoon. That is the one thing um, I need to promise you guys. So, um, but with that, I will turn it over to Carmen and Jeannie, who are going to announce or share with us the video from our director, Region Four uh, Director Kimley Ziegler. All right. Carmen. Hello, Region 4 Civitans. So I'm very sorry that I cannot be there in person today, but I still wanted to speak with you, so video. First and foremost, I want to thank all of the Civitan clubs that donated to my All in Summit page, helping me raise a total of $6,000, which was met matched by the FCIDD for a total of $12,000, and that is a lot of money. Um, I was the top fundraiser at All In Summit even before the match, so thank you so much for participating and helping me do that. 
Um, I also want to um, acknowledge Nora Valdo and Spunna Demekla, two of our other district officers for raising $175 and $734 respectively for a grand Region 4 district total of $12,909. So thank you so much for your participation in that. Um, I also want to thank all of those who participated in our uh, Region 4 fundraiser, which was our bingo. We raised a lot of money that, and I'm so thankful that those funds were allocated to help me in All in Summit. And so I can't tell you guys how appreciative I am of that. And I also want to thank all of those who participated in our Region 4 District Junior Civitan um, service project, which was creating cards and placemats for Meals on Wheels. Um, it was so, it was, it's something that very much brightens their day and it was great to have a project that both Civitans and Junior Civitans could participate in. I am very sad to say that this is my last one of these little videos, but I can say wholeheartedly that this was definitely the way to end my Junior Civitan experience. Um, I'm so thankful that I was able to step into this leadership role and I'm so thankful for my experience with Junior Civitans. Um, I just want y'all to know how appreciative I am that you guys had a hand in this experience and um, I hope you guys have a great rest of your meeting. Bye. Sorry about that, couldn't find the right controls. Um, so as you can see, Kinley, our director for 22-23 has just been amazing. Um, we are so excited and thrilled that she um, raised $6,000 before the FCIDD match. Um, it's one of the largest amounts that um, Chesapeake and or Cardinal and both have um, ever contributed to All In. So thank you all, all of our clubs, all of our individuals, all of the outside businesses who um, contributed to her success. Um, as you can see, Jeannie's also spotlighted here with me. And um, we wanted to once again, thank everybody for your support through all of the years. Um, I've been doing this for going on 10. Jeannie, you've been doing this, what, 27 years? <laughs> well, 26 years with Junior Civitans when I chartered the first club at John Adams. And then 25 years, you know, being a chair, co-chair, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, um, if you haven't already heard, um, you know, over the last few years, Jeannie and I have both been kind of putting it out there that this was going to be our last year and then it'd be like oh this is going to be our last year well this officially is our last year and right now we do not have any viable candidates who um, want to take over the junior civitan chair position so if you are interested and want to ensure that our junior civitan program continues so that amazing students like Kinley and the rest of our leadership team can continue to participate at the district and international levels, we need you guys to step up. So if you're interested, contact Denise, me, Jeannie, whoever, um, so that we can continue this amazing program. It's been an honor and a pleasure uh, for me for the last nine years to do this, but it's time for me to move on professionally. And Jeannie, you know, is moving on. I'll let you speak, Jeannie, as to what you're doing, but we hope that you guys step up and uh, continue this program on behalf of Region 4. Yes, I agree with you, Carmen, on that. We definitely, I don't want to see it disappear. So we, I plead for anyone that could take this on. Now that we're a Region 4 district, this year was a heck of a lot easier than the past years. I mean, it was real easy. And I was able, and Carmen, Carmen has a full-time career. I had a career in the chemical industry and I was chair during that time when it was more difficult. So please consider it. Let me tell you, teenagers give you energy. They give you motivation. They bring up your spirits. 
I've known Kinley since she joined in sixth grade at the John Adams Junior 17 Club. So I've known her for seven years and I've watched this little girl that was so afraid of everything develop into this young woman that has the biggest caring heart. She's going on to pursue a career in nursing at West Virginia University. So she's gonna continue to help people. As for me, it's been a long time. I can tell you the Cardinal District's heard me for a long time saying, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. But I've made the decision now. The house is up for sale. I'm moving to North Carolina to be with my daughter and my granddaughter. It's hard to leave my junior cemeteries. I cried at the last meeting that I attended. I was the liaison for the George Washington Club. And I cried when I had to say goodbye to them. But I know my place is here in North Carolina with my family. And, you know, I mean, I'll probably, you know, I'm gonna get involved with my community service down here, but it's gonna take me a while to get into it. But I just wanted to thank you all for all the support over the years. I'm gonna miss you guys, but hey, there's always Zoom. <laughs> And, and just a second, what Jeannie was saying, now that we are a, um, a region, a district region, whatever we're called, the position is so much easier and it's not as much work as it was. And we, you know, have put a committee together. So, you know, the, it's more of a collaboration and there's, you know, support from international. So I hope you guys step up. And with that saying, um, Denise, I can, we can move on. Oops, okay. so can I, hang on. Oh, Oop. not another break. Oh, not another break. Sorry, guys. No. Getting caught up. <laughs> okay. Um, and so I just want to take this opportunity. I know technically, I think you guys still have about two more months uh, in your term because uh, Junior Civitan, for those of you that may not know, is a different cycle than um, the regular, the adult Civitans. So they actually end their term on June 30th. So we've got a couple more months with these two wonderful ladies, but um, I just, I wanna take this opportunity to thank them. Uh, I know at least from the Chesapeake, former Chesapeake district, um, Carmen, the program thrived under you and Jeannie, I know, um, you know, you kept an amazing program running with some really long tenured junior Civitan clubs. And so I wanna thank both of you for your commitment and your dedication to making sure that we are not just, um, you know, running a program that helps the youth, um, you know, our, our students be able to have something great to do and a way to give back, but that we're using this program to create leaders that are going to run the world one day, and they're going to do it with compassion and, um, you know, dedication and passion for helping others. So thank you for both of your commitments to, um, you know, to the program and the impact that you've made, not just on um, the youth that you've served, but also for the rest of us in um, the things that they're gonna go on to do um, in the world. So thank you all. And I encourage you, uh, please, I 100% agree that um, the way that one of the, the really key benefits of this transition from going from districts to regions is the simplification and streamlining and recruiting more people to do the work that was typically done by one or two people in each of the districts. So there's a ton of people that are supporting this program. If you are one of those people, thank you so much for what you've done. Please consider replacing these two amazing women. I know that they're big shoes to fill, but um, I know that they're going to be able to support you in that. Um, and we'd love to see you bring your, your time, talents, and skills to the um, to the role to see how we can continue to grow this program and make even more of an impact in our youth leadership going forward. So thank you all. Thank you, Carmen and Jimmy. Appreciate um, everything that you've done. And uh, we're not done with you yet. So <laughs> let us know how we can support you over the next couple of months. All right. So now it is awards time. As I promised, we are going to celebrate some great successes because I just absolutely loved seeing some, some wins this over the past couple of months. And so I wanted to share and recognize um, those of you that have contributed. So um, Carmen, if you'd like to switch to the next slide, we'll go ahead and announce our first set of awards. So 
for all of you clubs that participated in the supply or in the 17 days of service, we have a $75 gift card that is coming your way to three clubs. We're going to pick three clubs today um, that are going to get this $75 to go to the brand new supply house and start to, um, to spend that money, start to buy those items and uh, be able to have a lot of fun with your club. So with that, all of the names of the 11 clubs that were entered in um, that, that Kendra shared with us today are in on slips of paper in this little basket. And so I am going to, you're going to watch this random drawing. I'm not even looking. So I'm just going to pick out some names um, of from this basket. And the first one I've got is, oh, Frederick Civitan. So Frederick Civitan Club will get $75. Um, that will go into, um, uh, we'll figure out, I think there's a, a coupon code I'll be giving you, um, but definitely Frederick Civitan, enjoy spending that $75. All right, now let me pull the second club. All right, so the second club I have is, oh, it fell out of the basket, it wanted so bad. North Columbus, North Columbus Civitan Club, congratulations, way to go, way to go. Awesome, North Columbus. All right, let's see who our last club is going to be of the big money, big money. All right, and it is the Thomas Jefferson Club. Congratulations, Thomas Jefferson, for your project. So we have our big three winners, the Frederick Civitan Club, the North Columbus Civitan Club, and the Thomas Jefferson Civitan Club won $75 gift cards to our brand new supply house. Congratulations to those three clubs. Congratulations to everybody that participated in that. As Kendra said, we're just going to make it bigger and better with all kinds of great PR um, and fun things to uh, support that campaign. And then uh, I think I might have said right at the beginning um, in my update that we have had some growth of new members that have come into, um, into Civitan. And so I wanted to recognize two clubs that kind of are at the top of the leaderboard for recruiting new members. And I'd like to award a $75 Supply House gift card to... The Baltimore Civitan Club for recruiting five new members this year. Congratulations, Baltimore. And uh, please have fun. Hopefully um, you'll use some of that $75 to buy some new member swag for the five new members that you brought in. And then the $50 Supply House gift card goes to our Greater Silver Spring Club. They have re recruited three new members so far this year. And um, definitely excited to see there's a ton of excitement and projects that the club is doing. So bringing new hands in to help with that work um, is a tremendous um, win for their club. So they are gonna win a, a $50 supply house gift card. And uh, again, I hope they use it to buy some fun swag and new items. All right. So with that, do we have our president? Is she, Joanne, are you ready to live stream and show us what you're doing today? I'm here. Can you hear me? I can definitely hear you. Hello. Yes. Can you can see you me? Us? Yes. Can you see me? I cannot see you, Joanne. Nope, your video is not on, Joanne. It is on. It says it's on. Okay, now it's off. There you go. There you there. are. There we go. Hey, Joanne. Hey. Here, guys. Yeah, I'm down here in uh, University Park. Right over there is Turks Stadium, our big rival of mine, you know, West Virginia. So we just keep that going. But um, I just wanted to fill you all in a little bit. Um, first of all, before I go into the um, to the expo, um, I just wanted to give you a couple quick updates on international, if you don't mind. Um, first off, uh, Denise mentioned the supply house, and I do want to mention that I'm really pleased with some of the items that we were able to see at the supply house. Um, it's some really good things. I'm actually wearing one right now. 
which is the um, little side purse. I don't know if you can see it. There it is. There it is. It's a, that's an embroidered purse, but this thing has like been my go-to since I got it a few weeks ago. So there's really some neat um, items available on the supply house. Um, I wanted to mention that we have a new um, marketing and communications director at Civitine International. Brittany Knox Mensa started with us on, on uh, Monday and she had, according to Scarlett, a, a terrific start to the week. Um, Yesterday, they were at a show like I'm at today in, in Alabama. So um, she's been learning all about what's going on there at, at Civitan International. So um, when you get a chance, reach out and welcome Brittany to our team. And let's see, what else? Um, at our spring board meeting, I wanted to mention that we did vote to um, give a concentrated effort toward um, growth with Civitan International um, so that we can, you know, see some more growth and reach out to more people. Um, try and switch this camera. I'm, the, I'm new to the car. We're at the world of possibilities. I'm just going to go in here, take a look around. They're expecting a, a few thousand people here today. Um, there's different vendors as far as um, for mobility, for access for those with disabilities, and even um, for other uh, life supports that just people need all together, like dog training. Um, so you've got different areas, and this is an area where you're first coming in with all these different vendors. You've even got Electrolux here today. Um, just past best buddies, and you know, so there's a lot of look who this is. As there's Lynn, she's going back to our table, and I'll show you our table. And then over here is um, she's getting ready to kick it off. So, what will happen here at about 11 o'clock before we start pouring into this? Um, conference area, and they'll start talking with all these vendors. And our goal today is to meet some of these vendors and introduce ourselves and Civitan to these vendors so that we can tell them exactly what, you know, Civitan does and what we can do to help in the community. So as you can see, there's a lot of people here already, and these are just the vendors because the event really doesn't kick off until 11 o'clock this morning. I'm going to wander over here real quick to our table. There's, you will see a few people here that you know and recognize. And Joe and I have watched the whole thing from, from start to finish. Like, they don't even know I'm doing this. Like, there's Ray. Say hi, Ray. Hi. <laughs> so we set up a table. Um, Arlington brought their banner, which is really good. Advertisement. Get the name out. And then... Leandro, Joe, and Sly are reviewing a scrapbook that was just given to us from the, from the Gaithersburg Civitan Club. Um, what year is that scrapbook from? What year is the scrapbook from? 73. That's from 1973. We were particularly interested, of course, being with the Frederick Club, you know, because we are worrying about all this growth. And it's real interesting to see that um, in 1973, the Frederick Club only had five members. So what that told us is that, you know, we were able to rebuild at that time in 1973. If we could do it then, we can do it now. And I'm really glad to, uh, to get that little bit of information because that makes me have a little bit more faith in the, in the, in the, uh, the way our organization can um, grow going forward. So with that being said, I think you see everything that, um, we're, we're up against today, so we're here to have a great time, and uh, hopefully we'll make some great contacts. That's all I got. Anybody have any questions? Awesome. Anybody have questions for Joanne? Joanne, this is John. Is the ARC represented there? Um, I have not seen the ARC, uh, but I haven't been clear around yet, so I'm sure they're here somewhere. Okay. You know that... Scarlett and I attended the art conference out in um, Oklahoma City. 
this year. So that was a fun event. We got to got to meet a lot of the art um, clients and uh, people from the art there. Awesome. All right. Any other uh, questions for Joanne? Joanne, we've got a couple of things in the chat. Um, one is great way to make folks aware of Civitan. So thank you for everything that you guys are doing out there today. Um, I know there's just even more opportunities like this that we'll be looking at as we move forward. And as uh, President Joanne said, growth of the organization is critical and it's about to get a big shot in the arm with some additional resources. So stay tuned for those. Um, and I know um, Joanne is actually going to be the trainer for our May 13th uh, Connect to Thrive member recruitment. So she's bringing our new member recruitment program uh, training to us live. So you get the benefit of uh, getting her in person and um, with all kinds of questions you want to ask and all kinds of resources. So thank you guys, Joe, Joanne, Lynn, Ray, Sly, Leandra, everybody for um, representing us today. And uh, can't wait to hear how it goes and if there's uh, opportunities for others of us um, who may want to do similar things. So we'll, we'll look forward to hearing from you hopefully in, uh, in May or June. But thanks, guys, for Thank all you your time today. Yeah. Have a fantastic day and know that all of us are rooting for you. And uh, can't <laughs> wait to hear about how the day is. So thanks, guys. We'll, uh, we'll let you get back to doing what you're doing. <laughs> Have fun. Thanks, Joanne. Uh -huh. All right, so we have just a couple of things um, that we want to uh, wrap up today with. Um, and the next one is Carol Walters is going to share with us the scholarship opportunity um, that she talked about earlier in the year. They have selected a winner, so she's going to bring to us who that winner is. Carol, it's all yours. Hi, everyone. As you saw Joanne walking through that expo and you saw all those tables draped with, this is this company, this is this foundation, this is this whatever, whatever organization. I was in the supply house catalog yesterday and they have those table drapes. They've never had them before. I was really excited to see them. So if you're going to be, not tomorrow or today, but soon, if you're going to be in an expo like that, look at the supply house catalog. You can get table drapes and signs that you can put onto the table that you're using. You don't, it's great to have the banner, absolutely, but small signs that are easy to read. So look at the supply house catalog and see some of the exciting new things they have. Now, as to scholarships, first of all, we need fellows who would like to join our started with West Virginia, became Cardinal, and now it's Region 4 District Scholarship. The fellows are $300. The scholarship that we give out is $1,000. So if anyone is interested in becoming a fellow, send me a check, whatever, contact me, and I'll be happy to set you up with the information. You don't have to go to meetings. You just become a fellow. Very simple. Now, I have a favor to ask, Jeannie, would you please be the one to contact Kinley to tell her that she has won the Region 4 District Scholarship? I owe you that one. You've been involved with juniors and specifically with Kinley for many years. It's far less important for me to contact her than it will be for her to hear it from you. It will give me great pleasure to do this. It really will. Thank you so much for this. I know she is going to appreciate it so much. And as I said earlier, she's going to use that money in her career that's going to continue to make a difference in the lives of others. She's going to make one fantastic nurse, I can tell y'all. Yes, she will. She will be wonderful. And now that you've all had a chance to meet Kinley via video, you know why we think she's so very special. So Jeannie, thank you. And I Carmen, I told you the other day that yes, you would indeed know the scholarship 
winner, but I wouldn't tell you who it was. <laughs> so now we know. So thank you all. Um, the fall district meeting on September 30th, it will be simultaneous from all these different locations. We're setting it up. It'll be fun. We'll feel like we're all in the same big room. We're going to do it remotely from a number of locations. So it will be a terrific together online Zoom, giant Zoom meeting. So think about that for September 30th, celebrating the end of our year. With that, I will turn everything over to Tony because Tony has a great presentation. So thank you all and yeah. thanks for your scholarship donations and congratulations to Kinley. Carol. Have fun, Jeannie. Fantastic. Carol. Thank you, Carol. Um, and Jeannie, enjoy that. Please tell Kinley that we are so excited that she's going to um, receive this great scholarship and that we're all rooting for her um, to win or to, to have an amazing career. And if any of us can help her in that journey, to so please let us know. Um, because just because her junior Civitan time is ending, it doesn't mean that the support of Civitans is ending as well. So definitely um, keep us posted on her progress as she moves through her career. And, um, you know, if there's ever a way we can bring her back into the Civitan fold, we'd love to do that because we know that she's an amazing person. All right. So uh, before I turn Denise, it over to Tony, Denise, um, Denise, John yes. has his hand up. Oh, I have John. Yes, um, just got a, a text from Linda Hadley, wanted to make sure everyone knows that the scholarship <clears throat> that was just awarded comes from a different fund uh, than the one for, for the, uh, the the Chesapeake, the FCIDD. So the, there are two scholarships, um, the one that Carol just addressed uh, for the Region 4 District is one that is based on service as opposed to need. And I, that Carol can speak better, but I think that's one of the primary differences. Great, all right, thank you. I appreciate that clarification, John. Um, and so before I turn it over to Tony, I just want to, uh, you know, as we promised, the next section of our, um, of our meeting here today is going to be a training on how to um, use a club website that is going to be built on the Civitan International platform, um, how you can use that to tell our story of the great things that you're doing in your community. With that being said, I know we've got some folks that are already have their Civitan website set up or that, you know, setting up a website isn't necessarily um, on their club's radar right now. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick wrap up of the meeting for those of you that want to jump off and don't want to participate in the, the club website training um, and with just a couple of things before uh, we uh, move into that training. But like I said, I encourage you, even if it maybe isn't on your radar right now, but maybe on your radar at some time in the future, just to hang on with us and see how easy it is, or at least as easy as Tony <clears throat> promises me it's going to be. Because um, we're the guinea pigs today, so he's going to help us, um, Martinsburg Civitan, create ours. But um, so a couple of notes uh, that I took from today's uh, meeting that I would love, love, love for you guys to, to do um, some action items, if you will, because, you know, it's it's springtime and we're all jumping into action. Um, so first is, uh, you know, the bylaws, as Carol and I both mentioned, are coming. So definitely take the opportunity when the Civitan magazine comes out to um, read that, understand the bylaws, reach out to us if you have questions. Um, you know, we've heard multiple times today, the supply house is amazing and the new uh, supply house. So go to the Civitan International website and check that out. In addition to the new awards program. Mm -hmm. So again, we talked about, you know, that um, it's, we don't do it for the awards, but these are great opportunities to speak to, um, you know, what we're doing and sharing that with the rest of the organization. And then I put a challenge out there to recruit two members and just thinking about if each one of the members of our clubs could find at least one person, then the chances of, of us being able to have two people, two new members recruited by the end of the year um, is even more possible. So I encourage you guys to challenge members of your club to do that. And then come to the Connect to Thrive meetings. We've got two great meetings lined up with training and speakers. 
Um, and so that will be May 9th. Thank you, John, for uh, helping clarify that. That is May 9th. It is on a Tuesday, the second Tuesday of the month. We've tried to move these around throughout the year just so that if, um, you know, if the meeting that date that it was on was on your club meeting, another commitment that you had, we want to make sure everybody had an opportunity to participate. So um, May 9th and June 13th. So please come join us. Lots of great things happening there. Um, and it is an hour. <clears throat> So we do want to be respectful of your time at 6 p.m. Um, and then I encourage you to take John, Kendra, and Joe. All three of them have offered to provide some resources and some training to your clubs. It doesn't, it's super easy. If the technology is a little bit scary to you, let us know. We can certainly help with how to get um, somebody zoomed in to a meeting. And you don't need a presentation and you know a, a screen or anything like that. A laptop is more than enough or an iPad is more than enough. Um, to be able to get that to happen. We just actually did it um, pretty recently and it worked perfectly. So let us know or let them know. Um, and then if you are participating with any ARCs, uh, we heard a uh, number today about ARC and even in our Civitan days of service, there was a lot there about ARC partnerships. Um, so I encourage you to let John know so that he can help track those for us um, and help support you in strengthening or expanding those partnerships. And then lastly, um, or a couple of last things. So Civitans at the helm, our President's Council, Walk and Roll, Breakthrough Golf Tournament. Joe uh, shared so many great opportunities today with us to be able to um, share that with your, with your clubs and you know, ways to support all of the great philanthropic efforts that we do throughout Civitan International. And then so that we keep Carol happy because keeping Carol happy keeps everybody else happy, including John, who is sitting there. I see him shaking his head uh, to hold your club elections over the next couple of months. Make sure that you report that to Civitan International so that they can get the appropriate communications to those officers so that they can support them with training and different resources along in their journey so that they can be um, they can thrive in those roles and, and do the best that they can. So please encourage you to do that over the next couple of months, report your officers, and then make sure that they get trained so that you can be a club in good standing and potentially either in person or hopefully virtually next year, be able to vote um, at our international election. And I encourage you, to, if you haven't kind of checked in with your honor club application, that is a great roadmap for us to use. So I know in our club, we, um, we kind of use that as a way to plan for this year. Judy, who's on the call with us today, um, did a great job of kind of leading through and making sure that our club was set up for success. And then we just did a nice little check-in this week to see where are we and what do we still need to do? And it was a great way. So I encourage you to pull that out, dust it off and take a look and see where you are because we still have about five months left to accomplish a lot of great things. And it's the best time of year to do it because the weather's great and people want to be out and about doing fun things. And then um, the last thing before I turn it over to Tony is um, to reach out about Junior Civitan. It is going to be a big, big opportunity um, for somebody to come in and replace the amazing leaders that we've had in that program and Jeannie and Carmen. And, uh, you know, they did it as co-leaders. That opportunity is available as well to others if you don't necessarily want to take um, the entire role yourself. There is no problem um, with having two people do that. Um, so I encourage you to get a buddy um, and reach out to myself or Carmen and Jeannie and um, find out, you know, how do you, how do we keep this amazing program going to continue to support amazing leaders, guys like Kinley, like she's so phenomenal. We've not had the success that we've had in both of, um, in all three of our previous districts without the support of these two amazing ladies. And we want, want, want to continue that legacy that we have had for many years. And not everybody has an FCIDD, guys. Uh, so let's make sure that we're leveraging that opportunity, that unique thing that we have, resource that we have um, to support these, these young leaders, the future leaders of our world. So with that, um, that's all I have. Again, if anyone um, needs to jump off now, feel free to do so. But uh, hopefully uh, all or, or the majority of you will hang out with us for just a little bit longer as Tony uh, teaches me, schools me on uh, how to build a club website, which is going to be 
if nothing else, you're going to get a lot of laughs, I'm sure. So please hang out with us. If you cannot totally understand, enjoy the rest of your day. And we will see you again um, in May and June and hopefully in, uh, in um, August in Indianapolis. And then we'll be back together in September as a group in this group um, to, to share all of the successes of the year. So thank you all. And uh, can't wait to see what the next five months of the Zimitan year have in store for you and your clubs. Thank you. All right. So that, uh, Tony, let's see. Can you teach a bulldog new tricks? Yes, I can. <laughs> good morning, I love good morning it. everyone. Um, good morning, all you Sibitans. Well, you know, I think you should have had those who already have a website to stay on board because they can use this as a supplement. When people uh, access the uh, national website, international website, and they use it as a locator, it would direct them to their club. I'm wow. sure that's what they're planning on doing. Um, yeah. I, I'm excited to help uh, you create your club's website if you already, if you don't have one. Now, I, I believe it's so easy. I actually got schooled by uh, Damian Cooper and L. Uh, Harmon how easy it was for them to build a Civitan Club of Dayton's website. They told me it took them like five minutes. And I, so I played around with it. I, uh, I actually went in the, uh, the process and I found that the things you need to have on your computer are photos that you wanna upload for your website. So that's one of the things you wanna do. So uh, we're gonna go through this and uh, I'm going to have uh, uh, Carmen, who, who's gonna be doing the uh, actual? Uh, yep. It's, okay. It's yeah, it's going to be me. Um, but okay, Carmen, do you mind just flipping through those slides? Just because um, one thing that we're going to do after this meeting is um, recorded is we're going to send out the recording. We're going to post it on Facebook along with a PDF version of all of the um, the presentation, the PowerPoint today. So you have all of these links that Tony's going to reference. So Carmen, if you wouldn't mind, just kind of flip through the the next few slides just so that um, people can see what they're going to. Um, what's available to them if you sure. want to download it later. Denise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the recording and then start a new recording so that it's easier to segment. Is Are you okay with that? Yeah, but if you wouldn't mind just uh, in case people jumping off so they can see kind of if they can't stay what um, what's out there, um, just flip through. So um, Okay, give me two seconds and we'll get that set up for you. Yeah, no problem. And then yes, absolutely. We can 